Hello, I'm Dr. Dan Lieberman, the medical director of this channel, Phoenix Spine and Joint, your trusted source for the information you need to take proper care of your spine and joints. I'm so excited to be with you today for this video because today I get to introduce you to our brand new show, Best Practice. In medicine, best practice means a lot of things. First of all, best practice is evidence-based medical decision-making. Best practice also means cutting-edge technology, such as robotics, as well as best engineered materials and implants. And finally, best practice means having specialized and certified doctors. As a doctor, it's the care I expect for my own family, patients, and frankly, myself. If you have spine or joint pain, best practice will show you how to know when you need to act, the studies that are required to figure out exactly what is wrong, and the type of doctor you need to get back in the game. We don't stop there. Best practice shows you how to rank those doctors to find the very best one for you. At Phoenix Spine and Joint, we believe that everyone deserves someone to take care of them when they're sick or in pain. And we should all have all the information required to decide what's best for our own bodies. Best practice is about more than procedures. We also cover how to hack your way into an anti-inflammatory diet to use natural healing to stay in the game. We call out scams, quacks, and warn you about misinformation in your newsfeed. A table saw is a powerful tool for cutting wood. But if you're not careful, you can cut off your finger. The internet is a powerful tool for information about our health. But if you're not careful, you can fall for dangerous clickbait or be gaslit into making bad decisions. For the remainder of this video, I'll go over my own qualifications to host this show. The science stuff everyone needs to know to take good care of themselves and how you should use best practice to achieve less pain, and a healthier lifestyle. Come on now, let's get into it. Best practice is a big part of Phoenix Spine and Joints commitment to making sure you have all the information you need to make great medical decisions. As your host, I will walk you through the latest trends and information available anywhere in medical care. To qualify myself for providing this crucial but sometimes technical information, I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to share my own background. I'm a medical doctor and a surgeon. I practiced neurosurgery for 20 years in my hometown of Phoenix until I had to quit due to essential tremor. Nobody wants a shaky spine or brain surgeon. Unlike most surgeons today, I had the opportunity to practice in my own hometown. And like all surgeons, I'm not just a doctor. I'm a son and brother. My wife Becky and I have three children of our own, six siblings, 16 nieces and nephews, and 60-some cousins. As you might imagine, coming from a brood like that and practicing in my own hometown, Pretty much every week, I get a phone call that begins with, hey, I have X and I think I need Y. Who do you recommend? What has always impressed me about these calls is that everyone in healthcare knows who to see and why they're the best, but there's no good way for the public to get that information. That lack of transparency has always bothered me, and best practice is my way of shining a light so everyone can see. I'm also a trained scientist. My undergraduate degree was in mathematics and computer science, and those studies gave me a strong interest in the numbers behind decision-making. I received my medical doctor degree from the University of Arizona. My first real job was at the National Institutes of Health, where I rose to lead my own laboratory. I went on to train in surgery at the University of California at San Francisco, the first and still one of the top neurosurgical departments in the United States, known for being the thought leader as shown by its publishing more papers than any other department. 
I have six patents or inventions from medical devices to artificial intelligence of my own. I'm a published author in the medical literature, and I've presented my work to colleagues at dozens of scientific meetings. Today, I hope to use what I have learned as a scientist and doctor to bring you the information you need to live a better, healthier life, free of spine and joint pain. Up next on Best Practice, if you have another minute, we'd like to go over the tools you need to make good decisions about your diet, exercise, when you need to act or pick the right doctor. The United States routinely develops and provides the best healthcare in the world, but our system stinks. It's fragmented and can be expensive. Not unlike our information systems, social media and the web are full of misinformation. Here are three things you need to know to make the right decision for you and those you care about. First, you need to understand the pyramid of evidence. If you follow your news feed, you'll notice that every day there's a new study out. We follow Google Alerts daily here on everything from anti-inflammatory diet to total joint replacement, as well as spine, knee, foot, and ankle surgery. The media always present the information as you need to pay attention to change your life. That's not how science works. Science is a method of reaching the truth. I wouldn't say never, but hardly ever happens that one study is the whole story. A single study is a lot like a brick in the wall of truth. And not all the bricks are the same size or quality. Studies need to be ranked into case series, randomized controlled trials, and systematic reviews. You do not really need to understand the details of each level, but you do need to know that they form a pyramid. A case series is less powerful than a randomized controlled trial, which in turn is not as solid as a systematic review. On best practice, we'll point out new developments and put them in the context of this pyramid. The second thing you need to understand is confirmation bias. We live in a complex media and political environment. A lot of people are presenting and sorting information to support their preconceived ideas or even candidates. Again, that is just not how science works. As a method of finding the truth, science has its own rules and practices that have been fine-tuned over the years. Partisan propaganda bends those rules to support a narrative. A good example is clickbait. Science demands we put information in a pyramid and weigh it critically. Clickbait takes one tiny finding and blows it massively out of proportion. That could lead you to make risky or even harmful decisions. One of our jobs here at Best Practice is to warn you when someone is trying to gaslight you for their own purposes. These days, helping you spot misinformation is an important part of staying safe and sound. <laughs>